Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. So this happened in Miami. You know, Jeff Bezos is trying to buy up like every piece of property on this island in Miami. And so he's already purchased, let's see, a $68 million house, a $90 million house. Wow. Okay. And then he just purchased, let's see, a $79 million house. That's a lot of millions. Okay. But you know what? For him to spend $79, $80 million for a house, he just bought a Gulfstream for $80 million. Uh, You know, I'm not jealous, really, that much. No (laughs) No one believes you. (laughs) Exactly. Um, But, you know, it's kind of like, I mean, for us to go spend like $20 is for him to go spend like $20 million. He makes like $20 million a day or an hour or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So the reason why I bring this up is the guy that he bought the last house from for $79 million, a 19,000 square foot mansion uh, in Miami. His name is Leo Chris. And I looked him up. He's from Brazil. And he's an electronic and toy tycoon from Brazil. Uh, why aren't I a tycoon? <laughs> I know. Why couldn't I like marry a tycoon? But anyway, we won't go there. Um, so, but now Leo's kind of pissed off. Why? Because when he was negotiating for the sale of the house, he didn't know that it was Jeff Bezos <gasps> that was trying to buy it. And so the other realtor said, you know, like, oh, you know what, Leo, you're overpriced. And his real estate agent said, you know what, you really are overpriced. And so you need to drop the price of the house. So he dropped the price from like $85 million to $79 million. And now he's suing his real estate agent saying like, <gasps> you should have told me it was Jeff Bezos because I never would have lowered the price. Oh, man. Yes. Who do you think's right here? Are you on the side of the tycoon? Um, I think you know Jeff what? is smart. Oh, you know what? Jeff is smart. Okay. Yeah. And Leo's a dope. Okay? Sorry, Leo. You were dope. It's not his fault. Okay. Leo should have asked, yeah. like, you know, who's buying the house. Yeah. So like, for example, the, not the house that we're in now, the last house around 47th street is that I was not represented by a real estate agent because I found the house myself. Okay. And so, um, Barry and I, we go over and we look at the house and first of all, well, we're driving up the street and it's all gated. And Barry says to me, I'm not moving into this development. I'm like, <laughs> development? I don't think this is a development. And he's like, it has this big fence, a gate all around it. And I'm like, I think this is the house. I don't think this is the development. Ooh, okay. Okay. So we go in and I walk in the front door and I see the city of Phoenix. And yeah, the house smelled and all this other stuff. But <laughs> I'm like, we are buying this house. And Barry's like, we are not buying this house. <laughs> Okay. You've been around us long enough, right? That's exactly what Barry sounds like. Yes, exactly. And so we bought the house and not knowing (laughs) until we were into the negotiations that I was negotiating with Bill Lund. Okay. Bill Lund was married to Sharon Disney and the house was owned by Victoria Disney Lund who passed away. Okay. And so, uh, and so we negotiate, we negotiate, we negotiate. And then, um, anyway, long story short is that so I think, you know, Bill wanted this number and then I offered him half. And then classic we, Kim Commando yes. coming in with half. And then we Love negotiated that. for like six months. Uh-huh. I had to go to like the Lund and Disney events, families parties and all this other because they really wanted to know like who was going to buy the house yeah um and then finally um i call bill and i'm like bill this is my last and final offer i can't go any higher because as it is my whole family is going to be living on ramen noodles <laughs> and if you're okay with that and i was getting like really bad sodium and uh, who knows what else they put in those things and he started laughing and he said okay i'll meet you at this price and then Barry was on the patio. We were in, well, it's, we were in Hawaii. He's on the lanai. Can't say patio. <laughs> uh, and I went up to him. I said, we just bought the house from the Disney family. And he's like, oh, this is great. So when are they selling the contract? I'm like, I don't know. So I called Bill back. I said, hey, Bill, um, so do you want to send the contracts and DocuSign or how do you want to do this? And he's like, oh, no, it's all good. I trust you, Kim. It's fine. Everything would be great. And so then I go back on the night. I said, Bill says everything's going to be great. <laughs> Kim, get back in there. <laughs> exactly. 
Are you nuts? <laughs> you, you know, how do you know somebody else is going to buy the house from underneath yeah, you it? you can't handshake a house. So I called Bill back. <laughs> and I said, so Bill, um, do you want to like put the house in escrow or something? And Bill's like, do you really want to put it in escrow? I'm like, um, yeah. And he, said, <laughs> he said, well, we could do that. Do you want to do that now or when you get back to Phoenix? I'm like, I think we should probably do that now. And he's like, he said, all right, if you want to do that. <laughs> And, and he said, how much do you want to put down in escrow? Okay. I will tell you, it's public record. Okay. Mm. We paid two and a half million dollars for the house. Okay. Okay. And um, I said, I don't know, like, I don't know, like $5,000. <laughs> $5,000. <000. laughs> and Bill's like, okay. All right. Bill didn't care. You know what? He was just so happy. Like he, you know, and then when we sold the house. Mm-hmm. He has since passed away. Mm -hmm. And so I called his um, wife and I just said to her, you know, thank you. We had such great times in this home and we really appreciate it. And she's like, we were so happy that you guys bought that house. That's nice. Yeah. So so anyway, so it's always good to know like who you're buying the house from. Okay. So this is our takeaway. If you're buying a house, ask whose house is it? Who am I negotiating with? Because maybe it's Jeff Bezos if you're in Florida. Yeah. And, you know, and it's and it's an important thing. Like, you know, I bought a house in Hawaii. Yeah. And we were $300,000 apart. And I said to the real estate gal, I said, you know, why can't we do DocuSign? She goes, oh, you know, he's an older guy. He doesn't know how to do DocuSign. And he can barely text on his iPhone. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you're kidding. She's like, yeah, because that's why we have to do things by fax. I'm like, I don't even have a fax. That's why it's going to my email. So I said, you go back to them. And you tell the other real estate agent that I will teach him how to use his iPhone. I will have dinner with him. I'll take him to the Apple store. We'll buy a MacBook together. Oh. So anyway, um, he met me at the price. And now we're like the best of friends. <laughs> I love that. See, so it's always good to know who you're buying the house from. And on that happy note, welcome. It's Kim Commando today. It's your fun podcast about all things digital. And Andrew's a little bit under the weather, and he has been this week. So we're hoping to see him back in action next week. But joining me is our amazing content queen, Allie Seligman. Hello there, Al. Hi, Kim. And so what do you have on tap for us today? I have this absolutely insane story. Russian espionage, million dollar payouts, all kinds of crazy stuff. It sounds like a true crime podcast. No kidding. Um, Yeah. We'll get into the dirty, dirty details. You know, and you have to be so careful because, you know, you see all this crap on social media and you don't really know who's behind it. No, you sure don't. And it looks like it's just this like little person who's living in a basement with his mom and dad upstairs and, you know, getting all crazy on stuff when actually it could be (laughs) something a lot different. And this is the this is the part of the podcast where we like beg you, beg you to hit that subscribe button. Okay. Hit it, smash it, do whatever you want. I don't care. Click it, tap it, bop yes. it. Because we want to get 100,000 followers Wouldn't that be and nice? subscribers on YouTube. We really want that. So if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, we love that. Love, love, love that. Um, but just a quick reminder that you can actually watch the podcast if you want over on YouTube. That's YouTube.com slash Kim Commando. YouTube.com slash Kim Commando. And um, we are giving away, super excited, an iPhone 16. Yes, I heard... You ordered yours. I did. I ordered my iPhone 16 Pro Max, <laughs> of course, and I'm supposed to get it September 30th. We ordered it like the t- the, the second you were able to order it. Yeah. And That's a long time. It is, like two weeks away. Well, it'll feel like a surprise once it comes because you'll forgot that you ordered it by then. But I'm still like so amazed that apple was able to like have this major announcement and all the tech blogs are talking about oh it's the iphone 16 it has this it has this it has this <laughs> you know and then the airpods are now can double as hearing aids and yeah you know, this is what just always irritates me about tech websites and tech blogs because they go through all this great stuff and then at the bottom it says oh well the apple intelligence is not going to be available until like october Okay, that should be like the lead. Yeah, that's the exciting thing. That's the thing we care about. That's the thing we need to know. But that's why people have us, right? That's true. That's true. Well, here are some things that are happening in the tech verse that everybody needs to know about. First of all, Allie, I have to tell you this. Oh, no. If you get an email, your spouse is cheating. (laughs) Scott's not. (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> it's the new way that they're getting people to open email for sextortion scams. So scummy. Yes. And they say, click here for the proof. For the video. Oh. Imagine you get the subject line. Your spouse is cheating. Everybody's going to open that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Even if you know it's spam, you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, that's like the last thing that Barry would ever do. <laughs> I know. <Okay>? Like- <laughs> right. I can't imagine. Scott would never in a million years. But like, would I click that email? Maybe. Just yes. to see what was inside, but don't click the links. Mm, yeah, do not click the links. No. Do not click the links. All right, let's talk about government jobs, getting a good government job. Okay. Have you ever worked for the government? No, I haven't. I never have either. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure that there are like some really stressful jobs at the government. Yes, I can imagine so. But then the cushy ones. Yeah, you all have the cushy ones. Yeah. So, but I guess apparently um, we are looking for 500 thousand cybersecurity positions throughout the country. Five hundred thousand. That is so many. And that really the translation there is like, oops, we're really understaffed. Exactly. Cybersecurity wise. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that means like, you know, the government is not here to help you. So you better have your butt covered eight ways from Sunday. Absolutely. But the reason why I bring this up is that used to be that if you wanted to get a good government job in cybersecurity is that you'd have to have like a four year degree and you have to fill out all these different. Four- now they're like, we don't care who you are. Okay? <laughs> you don't need a degree. Just come on in. Come on in. If you can explain a VPN, you got it. Come <laughs> exactly. on. <laughs> so, you know what? Maybe, you know, if this radio thing doesn't work out, I could go get a job working there for the go. government. Yeah. I'll <laughs> go with you if it doesn't work out. <laughs> could you imagine? Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't think that would go well for you. No, no. I tried corporate America. No, that, and this is like the, the worst version. It is. Yeah. I'd be like, excuse me, what, why can't we get this done like yesterday? <laughs> what are we doing here? What are we doing here? All right. Speaking of the government, uh, DJI drones, you know, they're owned by communist China. Yep. And a lot of people have DJI drones. Do you have guys have one? No, we don't. But I mean, they're the best drones. So of course, why wouldn't you have one if you were a drone person? Okay. I mean, you know, we have one. Yeah. Okay. Barry likes to fly that sucker all around, yeah. you know, uh, and, um, you know, I've tried it. I don't have enough patience to be a drone pilot. That is not surprising to me. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, it's over there. You're over here. You're like, okay, I'm bored. Yeah. I'm yeah. done with that. <laughs> it just didn't really happen for me. Yeah. But so many people love them. They do. And then they have that new Neo drone. Tiny that, little thing. Yeah, so it's like the size of the palm of your hand. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, which means like if you're 50 feet from it, you're not going to be able to see it. That's insane. Also, it's not just that it's so tiny. It takes really good footage. Yeah, 4K. Yeah. 4K video. Ugh. So, uh, but the reason why I bring this up is that now the government's saying, well, because of that whole Chinese spy balloon incident... <laughs> That was kind of a big deal. God, you know, I still can't imagine that. Big old thing going <laughs> all across the United States. <laughs> and, and people in China are going like, we don't know how that happened. So weird. Wasn't that so bizarre? Weird. We okay. just lost track of it. And then now China <laughs> is like saying like, oh, we're going to go invade Taiwan. And then that's going to drag us into this war in the Pacific. Yeah. And so uh, now the House of Representatives said, you know what? We can't have DJI drones here in the United States because they, they are mapping every single quadrant of the United States. Okay. Why haven't they noticed this like for the last 10, 15 years? I feel like... You know, we have a really big to-do list and something keeps getting shuffled to the bottom. (laughs) This might be the government's cybersecurity version of that. We're like, we knew, but we were so busy with everything else. Yeah, but it seems like something like if you really are concerned about this, that you probably, you probably should have put it to the top of the to-do list. You think so. So what does it mean for me if I, let's pretend I have a DJI drone. Can I still use it? You can still use it, but you're not going to be able to buy a new one. Okay. <laughs> Which means... <laughs> so if you've been thinking about getting a DJ... Now's the time I, for you to do it. Yeah, get it now before there. And there's a there's a drone manufacturer in Texas. Uh, drones made in the United States, yeah. controlled in the United States. And I think they... I just read, I think on TechCrunch, that they got like, I don't know, 50 gazillion dollars. Well, not gazillion, like 50 million dollars. <laughs> because they're saying like, oh, well, we need to have American-made drones. We yeah. need to have American-made... Okay. Mm. You know, that horse has been out of the barn for a long time. They are not going to be, and this is just my guess, I don't think they're going to be anywhere near as good 
for a good long while because DJ has been working on this stuff for a long time. Uh, let's let's have a happy story. I would love that. Okay. A four-year-old girl saved her mom's life. Oh. Her mom was having an epileptic seizure. And then she looked at her mom's phone and she didn't know how to open it. So she ran upstairs and she went to the Amazon Echo speaker and said, call my great grandma. Oh, my gosh. And the great grandma came over and helped everybody out. What a brave, smart little girl. Yes, because oh. great grandma apparently li- lives next door. Oh, so good. she was able to do that. Okay. But, so I thought that was something. That's amazing. All right. And here's finally a number. This is something that you can use when, you know, you get together for game night with your friends sure. and you guys are doing meal prep or whatever you're doing. And you can, you can look there and you can say <laughs> 100 trillion megabytes. 100 trillion megabytes. Do you know what that is? One hundred. That's a lot. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's more than I can fathom. That's how much wireless data that Americans used last year. (laughs) Okay. One hundred trillion megabytes. Okay. To put that in perspective, that would be like streaming Netflix nonstop in 4K for one and a half million years. (laughs) That's when you're super bored. Okay. All right. (laughs) Have you seen Dexter? Yeah. Did you like it? Uh, yes. I didn't watch the new season, only the old seasons, which we watched I watched the news one. No, I haven't watched the new one. You know, I was kind of done with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, after a while, you're like, okay, yeah, he kills people and it's they're the bad people. It's the same thing, right? There's only so much you can do. He kills bad people. Yeah. And then you're supposed to like feel guilty because he maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah I think like that. watch a season or two. That's enough Dexter. Uh, that's a 36% increase from the year before. On the data? Yes. Wow. So what the reason why is that they're saying that we are getting lost in TikTok. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you know, we have, a, what is it, 170 million Americans on TikTok every single day. Every single day. And, the, and they're on it for like six to eight hours a day. Well, yeah, it's just that you, I mean, think about it. Every little moment, for some people, every little moment you have that you're not occupied with something, people open their phones and look at this stuff. And I will admit that I did not have TikTok on my phone. And I thought to myself, and I was actually in Provence, France. Provence. Okay. And I thought to myself, you know what? I wonder, I'm going to really like fire up TikTok and see what it is about. Mm -hmm. And so I was on the elliptical, which, you know, is so incredibly boring, but you can burn like 300 calories in 20 minutes. So you're like, (laughs) all right, I'll just, you know, I can do it for 20 minutes. Yes, exactly. And so I'm sitting there and um, I'd fire up TikTok. And I mean, that thing knew who I was in about three minutes, just... Story. The only thing that I thought was really weird is I was getting like a lot of sugar daddy videos. I mean, you did just say that you wanted a tycoon. Oh, that could so be maybe it. they knew something that you didn't. That could be it. 100 trillion megabytes. Insane. It is. You know, I had a band once called 999 megabytes. I did. I was the lead singer, but we never got a gig. Oh. <laughs> You're lucky Andrew's gone. This is a safe space for you to make jokes like that. <laughs> it is a safe space. It is. Oh man, I can go crazy. Let's have a good day. Hey, it's Kim Commando today. It's your daily fun podcast about all things digital. All things digital. Now I know you might be wondering, like, hey, is this the Kim Commando show? I mean, because people have stopped me all the time. And <laughs> I say, you know what? Kim Commando today is not the show. Not the show. The Kim Commando show is the award-winning show. Not that we have not won awards yet. We will. On here. Awards incoming. I'm hoping for that award. I'm hoping for like the top podcaster in Rwanda award. (laughs) By the way, that was not here. Jeremy was wrong. What now? Jeremy said that we were the top tech podcast in Rwanda. We're not? It's not the Kim Commando Today podcast. It's the Kim Commando Show podcast. <gasps> no kidding. Yes. Is the well, top so now we tech. have nothing. What are we even doing here? I'm <laughs> out. Know. I'm out of here. I don't want to be with a loser. This is not <laughs> happening for me. So the Kim Commando Show, yes, for all these years, I did not allow it to be released as a podcast, but now we are. And so wherever you get your podcast, just search for Commando with a K, of course. And your uncle mentioned that to you, correct? He did. He came up to me and he said, Allie, I'm so happy the show is a podcast now. I can download it. And that felt pretty good. So now you need to tell them, you know what? I appreciate that personally. 
So I need him to like wherever he gets his podcast. <laughs> if he really feels that way, sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. If he ever wants to like be in my good grace, yeah, that he will go give it a nice five star review. Love it. And okay. say a few kind words. Okay. Do you want to give him the sign so he can spin on the corner? <laughs> yeah, he could do that too. Uh-huh. He could do that yeah. too. Okay. Which you know is a reminder for everybody that you know the way the big tech algorithms work is that the more people that engage in something, the more the algorithms say, "Oh, this must be some really great stuff." And yes. so whether you're watching our video on YouTube mm-hmm. or you're getting the podcast on your favorite podcast player is that if you can engage in it by just saying a comment or two or. Yeah, we don't tell you to do that just because we like to read them. We do like to read them, but it's because it trains you to your podcast player, whatever, to say, oh, you really like this. Yes, you like this. People like this. We love this. We yeah. love this. Gosh darn it. People like us. All right. So tell me about the Russians. This story is crazy. I really feel like we could do like a really dramatic like true crime podcast on this thing. We've got Russian espionage. We've got crazy payouts. We've got people who say, no, they fooled me too. So the story is there is this, I mean, here's the headline I saw, which kind of tells the whole thing, right? U.S. says Russia funded media company paid right wing influencers millions for videos. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. So the DOJ, they did this whole thing and found $10 million dollars went to these content creators. They were all wow. under this umbrella. It was called Tenant Media, which when you looked into Tenant, is founded in Tennessee. It was two Americans, a guy and his wife. Okay. Um, but all the funding for that, like 95%, was a wire transfer from Russia. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it was actually from RT, the propaganda arm <laughs> of the Russian government. Oh. That's where all this money came from. So, but now, now we got okay. So these two people in Tennessee, all of a sudden, they get a call out of the blue. Hi, hi. <laughs> so I don't think we can say these people. I mean, legally, maybe we can't say this. I would imagine these people had an inkling, right? They said, "No, no, no." A guy came to us. Let me find it because it was a fake name. A guy came to us, uh, and he said, "Oh, Edward Gregorian. Edward Gregorian came to us like the Gregorian calendar." Gregorian? Yes, but spelled okay. different. Um, it turns out he was a fake person. There was this whole fake profile. He's oh. He went to them. He went to them. It was actually these two Russians who set up this whole elaborate thing, said, we want to fund your podcast and we want to fund these creators. So then they talked to the creators. How much money do they need, do they need for this? Uh, one of them was getting, okay, first just to agree to make videos, $100,000 signing bonus. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. Uh, one was getting $100,000 a week. Okay, we have to put this into perspective. Okay, this does not happen. This does not happen. If somebody came to you, Kim, and said, all right, Kim, <laughs> I'm going to give you $100,000 a week, wouldn't your little oh, antennas of course, go be up? like, okay, well, wait a second. What, I mean, who's really behind this? I know. So, and where's the money coming from? Exactly. So these aren't just like little nobody podcasts, right? So one of them, uh, Tim Pool, 1.3 million followers on YouTube. Dave Rubin, 2.4 million. Benny Johnson, 2.4 million. So if you watch this stuff, now they say, we didn't know where the money was coming from. We just thought we were getting big fat paychecks. So what were what were they pitching on the podcast? Well, of course, the thing that, really drove all of this was Ukraine Russian war propaganda. So Russia's right, Ukraine's wrong. So they said the creators, no, they didn't tell us exactly what to say. We never got any editorial direction. If you think they weren't pulling the strings. They're pulling the strings, totally pulling the strings. Absolutely. Yes. I mean so you know all what? war propaganda yes. stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean like whoever uh is paying Yes. They give you recommendations. I mean, we see that. I mean, For you know, sure. whether we have it's a T-Mobile or or NetSuite or LinkedIn or I mean, these are these are our sponsors is that when it comes time for us to uh to I just got a text from Chip Davis. Oh, you know, he's the founder of Mannheim Steamroller. Yeah. So I sent, I know we'll come back to the podcast. Like, <laughs> that's who that was. Uh, I sent him a note this morning. He's a first time grandfather. Oh, that's it's, lovely. So I said, Good I want to see a pic. He was so excited. So excited. Boy I'm like, girl. um, let me see. <laughs> Did you, you get a what? picture? Of course I got a picture. Oh, <laughs> <gasps> look at her little face. Oh. <gasps> Oh, she's yes. beautiful. She's beautiful. She's wearing, she's a little tiny thing wearing a little tutu. Little tutu. 
That's adorable. <laughs> and on Chip's jet with a little thing that says jet setter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're Little back. Baby jet setter. Anyway, we're back. Uh, so uh, I should show everybody. I don't. I don't know if Chip would like to that. Um, he's well, so nice. Is, so we've got we've got sponsors, like you said, and we might give them as recommendations for things where it makes sense. Yes, but that is so much different. Yes, than government propaganda, which is yes. also illegal, by the way. Right. So that's where all this comes from because it's been illegal for a very long time. If you are from a government entity, if you are, you know, if it's propaganda, you have to disclose that. We don't stuff. even take political advertising. No. I no. Mean, we don't. It's, uh, but no. So you, you know, we know. And uh, that, of course, that they were feeding them exactly what they wanted to say. Yeah. And that's yeah. probably why they got caught. And Yes. Yes. Uh, all that stuff. So, I mean, I think it's a good reminder when you're watching things online. You never know where that why they're saying what they're saying, who they're being paid by, where that money comes from. And governments are out here doing this stuff. They really are. Yes. And of course they are, because it's an easy way. It's not just on YouTube. It's all over no. social TikTok as well. Absolutely. Uh, you know, just speaking of Chip. Is that we do the Christmas show, yeah. the Mannheim Steamroller American Christmas show that's on, I don't know, every radio station throughout the country. And I'll tell you, he is, Chip is the nicest man. Is he? I've never talked to him. Oh, well, you know what? When he's in her Phoenix, you have to meet him. He yeah. is just, he's so sweet. And I'll never forget, um, I went to his house. He lives in Omaha, Nebraska, mm. and um, on his big farm. And, uh, and he's, and there was a John Deere tractor there and he's like, Kim, have you ever driven a John Deere tractor? I'm like, uh, no, no. <laughs> so, you know what? He plopped me right up on there. Was it fun? <laughs> it was so fun. I bet. Those things are high tech too. Oh my gosh. It was so <sighs> fun. It was so amazing. And then, and then he's like, come here. And then he's like, it was like, it was like he was like 12 years old. <laughs> He's like, Showing okay. off his toys. Yes, it was. And he's like, here, come here. You got to come with me into the, my backyard. And so we go, he has microphones all over his backyard, like in the woods and all over the farm. And he's capturing nature sounds. So when you hear nature sounds on, whether it's fresh air or, you know, whatever he, in this Christmas songs, yeah. where, is that those are actual sounds no. <laughs> that are coming from his farm. That's awesome. This, you know, he's one of these guys that I'm sure you've met that he's really too smart for the room. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. in, in, but he and I get along because... You know the way that because like we we Your talk so just fast. Work well together, yeah, yeah, we talk so fast, and and people around us when we're like having conversations, they're like, "Wait a minute, what did they say like five minutes ago?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Christmas is right around the corner. And congrats to you, Chip, on your new little granddaughter. She's beautiful. She is. Look at her. Mm. Hey, it's Kim Commando today. It's your fun podcast about all things digital. And just a quick reminder, if you have not already entered to win that brand new iPhone 16, I can't win it. Allie can't win it. Andrew can't win it. That means that you can win it. And so you want to make sure that you go to winfromkim.com. Once again, win from Kim.com. Not like win something else, Kim. No, <laughs> win from Kim.com. Win from Kim.com. I know, but you know what? I get these emails like, oh, Kim Commando, you said that URL too fast. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I'm like, my gosh. Okay. If you can't remember, just go to commando.com. We got this big old button right there at the Huge top button. that says win a iPhone 16. No purchase required. No purchase required. The lawyers told us to say that. All right. So I want you to come with me back in time. I would love to. When I sat down with you and Jeremy and I said, Google's dead <laughs> and we need to change course. Mm -hmm. What was your initial reaction to that? Did you think, I mean, I mean, and it's okay. You can be honest. I mean, did you think like, like this woman's losing it? Did you think like, no. oh, she's onto something? Uh, so context here, this is right around when ChatGPT came out. Correct. And you thought, okay, this is going to completely change the way people use the internet. Forever. Um, I think at that time, I thought you were being a little dramatic. Overall, I accepted the idea. I did not think any of this would happen as fast as it has happened. Because I, I do remember Jeremy thinking the same thing, looking at me <laughs> like going like, she's just... She's lost it. She's lost it. You know, it's just... 
She's like on her own planet. She had a good run and now she's lost it. <laughs> it's like, okay, better sharpen up my CV over here. <laughs> get, get that going. Um, you know, it, it's an interesting time because you don't really need to Google anything. Okay. Um, our website traffic is tanking. Oh, yeah. And it's not just us. No. And that's why news sites and other sites are going under because, mm. and there was massive layoffs. Everywhere. Everywhere you turn. I feel like I see a new one every week um, at least. And that it's strictly because that the way that we have been using the internet for all these years is now gone. Yeah. You know, and, and you have Google's AI trying to answer questions. I mean, I read something this morning that uh, some woman went to Google and said, like, you know, I need potty training tips for my two-year-old. That and, should be a home run. Easy. Yes, okay, that's easy. And what happened? Okay. Uh, they, Google AI came back and said, you want to make it a fun environment for your child when the child goes potty. Okay. Okay. Fair. Uh, smear a balloon with feces. Oh, my gosh. Kim. Yeah. Uh, I don't... Smear a balloon with feces. Oh, yeah. That's going to bring the kid in. <laughs> Party time. Here you go. I oh, love that. <laughs> no. That's horrendous. No. Yeah. Um, so as we look at what's happening with Google, I mean, and, and we've talked about that. I mean, look at all the careers going by the wayside. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. SEO, yeah. content creators, web developers. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's kind of sad, but everybody has to pivot sure. and do something yeah. else. Well, the reason why I bring this up. It was back in 2006. That's when Oxford Dictionary said that Google was a verb. Right. Google it. Yes, we Google it. Yeah. Not the Google. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the we, Facebook. <laughs> the Facebook. Yeah. Uh, you, you actually Google things. And so we all knew what that meant to Google things. Well, Gen Zers, those folks born between 1997 and 2012, and I happen to have a Gen Zer, as you know, yeah. um, they are the first generation that is not using Google. Wow. Do they say Google it still? No, they don't really say Google it. This is not, not in their lexicon. Uh, that they are getting primarily most of their information from TikTok. If they are looking for unbiased reviews of something, they're going to Reddit. Okay. And when they're ready to buy something, they're going to Amazon. Okay. No, nope. Google is not part of any of that. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. Huh. So it's. Uh, I think that's just so interesting to me that that you know both of us that we've been living our lives the last you know what twenty years or whatever, yeah. um, using Google to get pr- primarily to get information. Absolutely, I say Google it still, and I imagine that will be a very hard habit to break even if we don't, because it's, it's synonymous with search. It's what we say when we Google want it. to search for something. Yes. Okay. I'm going to Google that real quick. Okay. And now every Gen Z and Gen Alpha is looking at you like, Oh, she's so old. She's <laughs> ancient. Remember she, Google? Oh yeah. Like roll down the window. <laughs> okay. So is your prediction that Google is going to pivot into something else that actually works in this new environment? Or do you think we are not going to use Google to find information? I think that they're, Longevity is in jeopardy. Mm. Uh, there was a guy who's in, his name was Jack Welsh. And I don't know if he's a big time business guru. Yeah. Um, and I interviewed him many years ago. And I'll never forget what he said. He said that, you know, when a company reaches 25 years, when a company reaches 20 years old, that unless the people who are in charge of the company uh, always looks ahead, yeah. That that will be the end of the company. The lifespan of a company is 20 years. That's really interesting, and that makes a lot of sense. And so, knocking on wood here, um, <laughs> is that, yeah, you have wood. I don't, mine's fake. <laughs> um, that, you know, that's why I've always tried to position us as... Oh, there's a phrase. Give us the phrase, Kim. If you don't innovate, you evaporate. Truly, though. And so you saw this... You saw you used ChatGPT and said, "Ooh, okay, this, this is, is going to change." And so we changed 
course in a really big way. And I'm glad we did. Well, and it's funny. I was on ChatGPT the other day writing about something. And um, I just, I don't know, I just plugged it in. I said, what would Kim Commando say about the iPhone 16? (laughs) Yeah. And it came, and you know what? It said, Kim Commando is always pro-consumer. It went on this whole thing and da 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 blah, 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 blah. But it said she would say, don't buy the iPhone 16 unless you have an iPhone 12 or older. And I thought, you know. Nailed it. <laughs> Seriously. If you have a 15, you don't need it. You no. do because you're the digital guys. You yes. have to. You have to, you know, talk about the new features. All and that I stuff. give Barry my old phone. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what he does. He always gets like, you know. The hand-me-downs, but he doesn't mind because otherwise he'd be sitting there, you know, looking at some Android phone and some (laughs) Samsung phone. I still can't get the guy out of Firefox. I don't know. What is the obsession with Firefox? Old school privacy guy. Yeah, that's what it is. It was the only privacy browser back in the day. So I I don't The other day I told him, I'm like, because he couldn't get something to work on his laptop. And of course, you know, he comes over to me all the time. So I go to get it work and I'm like, you need to stop <laughs> using Firefox. And he's like, oh, I love Firefox. I'm comfortable using it's Firefox. what he knows. And I'm like, no, only like 0.02% of the world uses it anymore. You need to be done with it. Nope. Got me some Firefox. <laughs> Hey, it's Kim Commando today. It's your fun podcast about everything digital. And if you're listening to us while you're walking, and uh, we love that, make sure that you tell a few friends about it. And if you have not already, make sure that you also get our free newsletter. Um, we are growing like gangbusters. Have you noticed that over the last week? Yeah, every time I log in, see that little number. I up, know. Up, up. I love that. So exciting. Yeah. Uh, and also, we have like 315,000 thumbs ups, <laughs> which I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so crazy. Love it. So if you're not getting our free newsletter make sure that you sign up now just head over to getkim.com once again that's getkim.com but i'm going to let you in on a little secret that if you go to winfromkim.com and you enter to win the iphone 16 is that that includes our free newsletter no purchase required of course so either you can if you already get the newsletter you can still enter to win the iphone people are asking me that all the time and yes you can do that winfromkim.com yeah. All right. So you are always astounding to me, Allie, because you are so smart. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. And is a butt coming right now? No, no, no. There's oh, okay. no way. Okay. Is that I really like that you're not only a tech nerd, that you're a science nerd. I love science stuff. I have been on this kick. Like if I, who knows, if I could do it all over, maybe I'd be a scientist right now. I am where I am and I'm really happy about that, but I'm obsessed with this stuff. It it started with like health science because I was just so interested in all that. And now I'm, I'm so in on it. And one of my favorite lists that comes out every year is called the Ig Nobel Prize. The so, Ig, Ig, like IG? Yeah. Ig so Nobel we Prize. know the Nobel Prize. Are big deals. Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela. But, I should get one of those. Um, Sure. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so these are people that have like truly changed the world, right? And done this science that is that is life changing. So the Ig Nobel Prize, they started this in the 90s and they find researchers who are doing, we'll call it quirky stuff, weird okay. things that at first you're like, who cares? But it's actually really interesting research. So this year, some of the winners, these are some things we learned. Uh, there is not... Equal probability. If I flip a coin, there's not equal probability that it's for heads gonna, or tails. Yeah, it is more likely to be the side that it started on. Oh, I wonder how everybody who feels about that, like, like you, know, like for the big NFL games. I know that's the thing, and they probably don't know. But now you know, we know. So if you're the one flipping the coin, you've got a little advantage, right? Uh, real plants imitate the shape of fake plants if they're next to them. Isn't that insane? What do you mean? They, they So say I have an orchid, okay. a real orchid. I put it next to that one. Maybe it's growing kind of this way. It might start to imitate the way that that one is shaped because it says, oh, look, another orchid. You know, I, this is going to sound really bizarre, but I think that we have underestimated plants for so long. I'm absolutely with you. I mean, I. We're I mean, both thinking of the same study yes, too, aren't the, we? Yeah. The one where like if. You like, you pull a leaf off of a plant. It's like silently screaming. I know. If you don't water them, they make these sounds 
to the other plants that are like alerting them that something's wrong. It makes me feel real bad about all the plants I've killed. You know, <laughs> and I have to tell you, so I was, I was in Santa Barbara when we were leaving to come back here and I had, you know, a plant and an orchid and I thought, I, guess, I don't know who's going to be watering these things. So I put them outside and I told the gardener, because because of the study, I'm like, oh, we can't let them die. Yeah, you they know? can't just sit there for all that time. Uh, we also know that a lot of famous people who have been famously old, right? Okay, this lady lived to 106. This person was whatever. They tend to come from places where the birth and death records are really bad and inconsistent. No. So yeah. like that place in Japan and in Italy and the Mediterranean diet mm-hmm. and all that other mm-hmm. stuff. All those. So... Maybe not the most reliable so source the, so there. The, so you still, but I mean, you still have to like, don't eat processed foods and oh, don't smoke. Oh, that stuff is still and, important, yes. but maybe like, you know, this, per, this, this was the blue person zone. was not 110. Oh. That kind of thing. You know, we, we put, the, we were talking about um, health studies in the newsletter. Yeah. And I got a note from some guy who said, you know, I'm on the Mediterranean diet. You know, Italy's in the Mediterranean, so I eat pizza every day. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not really sure that's on the Mediterranean No, diet. I think you missed the point. Yeah. I appreciate the humor, yes. I guess. Okay. And then finally, the big one this year that made all the headlines. Many mammals can breathe through their anuses. Wait. Uh-huh. I know people fart. <laughs> One of the best comments I saw was like, I know people talk out of them. No, but seriously, you can take in oxygen that way. And so, yes, it sounds so silly, right? Like, okay, what does that actually mean? Breathing through my butt. But think about back in COVID times when there were not enough ventilators and iron lungs for people. Okay, this is potentially another way to save someone who's having a respiratory issue. And there's a nice little diagram with this study that has a... um, a little oxygen thing that you, you know, yeah. think about this. Mm-hmm. Whoever's in charge of this study, <laughs> they, they go home for Thanksgiving dinner. And somebody says, you know, so, Allie, what are you working on? And you're like, <laughs> I am so excited. I can't stand it. I finally got the funding from the government on my major scientific study. Mm-hmm. And they're thinking like, oh, maybe you're going to like, you know, cure cancer, sure. or, you know, whatever it may be. And you're like, you know what? Some mammals breathe out of their butts. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if you look at the study, you'll never see the word butt. You'll never see any of the things that we all dumb it down to. It sounds so formal, so fancy, so like smart guy stuff. And then you look up these words and you're like, oh, this is just breathing out your butt. Interesting. So here's what I want to do. Okay. I want to play a little game with you. Excellent. I found some of the best Ig Nobel Prize winners over the years. We're going to play fill in the blank. Okay. We'll see if you can guess the word. Measuring the friction of... Go ahead. What they measure the friction of, Kim? The friction of yeah. what? To do what? Of something... Something notably slippery is my, my hint for you. Measuring the friction of socks on a polished wood floor. That's actually a good one. No, a banana peel. There was a real scientific study. (laughs) No, really? To see, okay, why is a banana peel this joke thing in movies and cartoons that people slip on? And so they studied it in real life. And yes, they're very slippery. Well, I'm glad that we spent money on that. Yeah. Uh, How wombats produce cube-shaped... Cube shaped um, poop. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they poop in cubes. That was the voice of God that came over. That, yes, thank you. <laughs> that was God saying, "Like, hey, that was me. What do you mean?" <laughs> uh, discovering the best way to separate blank from its cup by sloshing it. Real scientific study. Ice coffee coffee and the whole point coffee. was for people that are really clumsy how to not spill your coffee everywhere oh a real scientific study who knew okay uh two more for you using roller coasters roller coasters to hasten the passage of hasten the passage of well <laughs> well um hasten the passage of gas Kidney stones. <gasps> no kidney. kidding. Have you ever had a kidney stone? No. They are so painful. Well, you probably don't feel like going on a roller coaster if you have kidney stones, but it actually makes them pass faster. 
So Barry had crazy? Barry had a kidney stone when we went up to Mayo Clinic. Yeah. And his urologist comes out to me and Barry's sitting there and the urologist says, you know, said, yeah, we you know he's got a kidney stone and and all this other stuff and and I said, well, you know, so how bad is it? And the urologist says, it's he said it's, it's like having a bad period. Okay. And I'm like, I looked at Barry, I'm like, oh, get up. <laughs> You're fine. And then the no. urologist said the funniest thing. What? And so I said, so I said, so how, Barry says, so like, you know, how do I pass this thing? Get, you know, get rid of it. And um, his urologist says, well, for me, I go for a run. But for you, I don't think that would work. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Barry. Poor guy. He survived though. He did. Okay. Last one. How listening to blank reduces heart transplant rejection in mice. Love songs. <laughs> Opera. Opera. Yes. I was close. You were close. Opera. I have you ever been to the opera? Yeah, it's wonderful. Beautiful. I, hate I love the it. opera. Really? Yeah, it doesn't seem like the thing for you. You don't have the attention span for that. No. I just you know, I sat there and I was like after like three minutes, I'm like, you know what? They're screaming. <laughs> Okay, this is just not my idea. But the story, the beautiful music, the the culture. Yeah, I know. You know what? It doesn't really work for me. I'm not really you. there. Uh, let's go back to the poop, and let's go back to the the uh, <laughs> the uh, the hiney. Let's go back to the hiney. your hinder. Okay. Your hinder. My friend Joe calls it your hinder. Hinder. I like that. That's a Wisconsin thing. She tells me it's a hinder. Okay. So when she said she's like, we were walking. She's like, you know, you got a great hinder, and I'm like, what's a hinder? You know, but that's nice. Yeah, it was a nice compliment. I'm going to start saying that. Okay. Again, nice hinder. Yeah. Um, so we had some folks over for the big old debate the other night, which was so fun because people of different political affiliations all watching the yeah. debate. And then we had like 14 people there. So Oof. it was like, it's so a big party. It was. And the things that really happened. So there was a, a couple there who had never been to our house. Mm. So I was. She asked if she could get a tour. So yeah. I showed her around and then we get to Barry's office and Barry has like this big celestial telescope. I mean, so, I mean, it's like, I mean, if you want to see like, like if, if there's an alien on the moon, <laughs> I mean, it can zoom in, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, it's just going to like zoom in on everything. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, cause he used to be the amazing doctor science on, mm-hmm. on all that other stuff. So he's really into that. And so she's like, so what does that do? And I said, well, that's his science telescope. And she's a kindergarten teacher. And she said, you know, she said, she goes, she goes, and she goes, she goes, does he look at Pluto? And I said, yeah. And she goes, she goes, you know, she goes, I had to teach the kids last year about the solar system. And she, you know, and she goes, you know, of course, she said, they're all five years old. And every time you talk about Uranus, <laughs> she said, all they the kids, lose it. yeah, she said, all the kids are like giggling and yeah. having a crazy time about Uranus. <laughs> so this one little boy couldn't remember the name of it. So he said, so he's like, you know, so what's the name of the, she said, he said something like the planet with the stinky butthole. <laughs> Just see little five year olds. I that? can absolutely see that. So now, from now on, it's the planet with the stinky butthole. Good to know. <laughs> Uranus. Mm. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.